Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstein. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly photo chats. So today I want to talk about aging. And I'll tell you, I really appreciate having this venue to be able to talk about photography in many ways besides just gear, which I do love talking about gear too. And my Wednesday show has that every other week, you know, real world experience gear talk and the Leica talks, but I really like having this venue where we can talk about photography in some other ways. And there'll probably be some more gear on Saturdays too, but I just wanted to say thank you for tuning into these kinds of talks that aren't just the latest gear review. And I was thinking about what I said last time about how photographs get better with time. So Saul Leder was a photographer back in the 40s and 50s and he did a lot of color work, but a lot of people didn't know about him. He didn't show a lot of his work and his work got known when he was much older. And the same can be said for Fred Herzog up in Vancouver. He was photographing with Kodachrome. Again, when Kodachrome and color film is considered garish, it's for people shooting Coca-Cola ads, not for art. There were many photographers, including I think Ansel Adams, who said color is for amateurs and for anybody who doesn't want to be an artist, but black and white is the art. And Fred Herzog is shooting Kodachrome in Vancouver and his work wasn't discovered until much later as well. But there's something about that. Is the work good? It is. But what makes it extra good is time. Because if I go and say I have photographs from my town that I'm living in right now, from yesterday, people might say, okay, they're nicely composed. But if I say I have photographs from 1975, wow, well, that's 40, 50 years ago. That's something. Hey, I wanna see those because look at the cars. There's 60s and 70s cars on the street. If I say I have photographs from 1980, 1990, it all changes because the things that are there aren't there anymore. I probably told the story of, in the past, I, when I first moved to Colorado, I moved to a little town called Lyons and I photographed all the town, all the businesses, interior and exterior, restaurants and retail and services. And I made up a website called Downtown Lyons, Colorado. And it was a way for me to meet all the business owners so they would know I'm in town and I'm a photographer and I'm a web guy and I made up a website that was a tourist website. So people when coming to town could come and see what our town has to offer and they could look inside every restaurant. They could click a link to menus. It was just, you know, good tourist little guide. And it was a website that because the town was small, I could get the whole town into it. There wasn't any fee. There wasn't a, you have to be a part of any chamber. It was just like everybody is in it. And that way I got to meet a lot of those business owners. Well, 10 years later, the site's not really being used. So I end up taking it offline. And then another 15 years goes by or 10 years goes by. And I come across a folder that has all those photographs in it. And I pull those photos out and I post them on Facebook and to a Lions group. And I say, hey, there's some photos that I took about 10 or 15 years ago. Remember these places? And people went nuts. And they didn't go nuts because of this incredible photography. A lot of them were straightforward record shots of what the interiors and exteriors look like, done with care, but not necessarily art photography. But they weren't responding to the, to the art. They were responding to, I had dinner with my dad there, or I had a date in that restaurant with so-and-so, or I met, or I shopped, or I used to go there. They were experiencing things through those photographs. I was taking them on a little time travel. And just like when I played in a rock band, I play guitar and I played in a rock band and we played cover music. And I always said, nobody's coming out to hear us play like, oh, let's watch these musicians. Oh, look, it's a concert. It wasn't really a concert. We were a dance band that was playing music so that people could enjoy themselves dance and remember where they were when they heard that Pretender song or that Eagles song. And we were playing the kinds of songs that 
were time travel in audio form in a sense. They were able to travel back to their youth if that's where they first heard that song say. And we were very aware of that. Well, again, we were a proficient enough band, but we weren't, I always said the best thing we could do is choose good songs because a lot of bands play the same songs and we were looking for cool songs that not everybody plays that we could catch somebody and go, oh, I remember that song. I haven't heard that in a long time. Well, the same is true for your photographs. Vivian Mayer's work is incredibly good work, but the element of time for when it was discovered certainly helps. If she had photographed in 2000 to 2009 when she passed, and only in that block of time done all those incredible compositions, there might not have been as much interest in her work because it was so contemporary. But time adds value. So anything we're shooting, I may have mentioned once before the famous Gary Winogrand line where he said to Lee Friedlander or somebody else he was walking the streets of New York with, he said, whatever you photograph today, do the best job you can possibly do. The photograph only gets better as time goes on. And that's a true thing. Art photographs are, sometimes I think we think they're insignificant. I think people bring photographs to my monthly event called Beers and Cameras and I've said many times, I said, it's like we're all songwriters. We're getting together and we're showing each other what song we wrote. But now what? Where are we going to play it in public? We're photographers. We're showing work on a screen. These are wonderful photos. But what are you going to do with them? Are you going to print them? Are you going to gift them? Are you going to sell them? Are you going to decorate your bathroom? The point is, what is the point of making photographs if we have no point of what we're going to do with them? And I think we have to think about that as we're making our prints, because I'm certainly a big proponent of making prints, making art out of these photographs. And then certainly the ones that we're not so sure that we need to print right now, store them well, because those photographs are going to have value as they age. If you photograph, you know, the grass on your front lawn, in 50 years, grass might look similar. But if you photograph your downtown, in 50 years, I guarantee that that photograph will have value because people will want to go back in time to when their parents or grandparents lived here and they want to see what it looked like. So time is a valuable thing for us as photographers. And I think a lot of people right now, they shoot ordinary things sometimes and they just toss them. I'm not a fan of people walking with their phones in a city. It seems like it's a storyless photo, but it might have more value in the future when we're no longer doing that. And so everything that is well made should be preserved and stored in a way that you can find it and printed and archived so that you actually are creating a body of work that has a chance to age. I think that's super important to make it so that we're creating work that we know is good now, but it'll only get better. So use the element of time in your favor because it's already working for you. And as somebody said, you know, if you're going to build a wealth of work, but it's going to take 20 years, what's the point? It's like, well, I plan on being around in 20 years, so why not? There's no time that's too late to start. It's just a matter of doing it now, making the work. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. If you can support, hit the Patreon. Thanks to my supporters, and I'll be back next Saturday. We'll talk more photography. As always, here's the good life.